field investment in all sectors of the economy. Um, except two areas. One is illegal businesses and arms. Apart from that, we promote investment in all sectors of the economy. As an IPA, we are also mandated to promote and facilitate export. Uh, we also support small businesses. And we also advocate on behalf of the private sector. Uh, as a country, the Gambia, uh, the reason to invest in the Gambia is because we have uh, a peaceful country. That's why we call ourselves the smiling cross of the Gambia or the smiling cross of Africa. Uh, when it comes to investment, uh, government has mandated GAIPA uh, to promote investment in all sectors, but there are some sectors that are very close to the heart of government, and those are the ones that are identified as priority sectors. Uh, these sectors include agriculture, which is seen to be the backbone of the country. Uh, energy also is a priority sector. Fisheries is a priority uh, sector. Uh, you have other services which include uh, ICT, that is information communication technology, health and medical services. Tourism also uh, is a priority sector. Uh, infrastructure is a priority sector. Forestry is a priority sector. Financial services is a priority, uh, priority sector. And uh, manufacturing also is a priority sector. So these sectors are very important and they are very close to the heart of government. Uh, that is why uh, government has mandated GAIPA uh, to promote investment in all sectors, but closely we should focus on these uh, priority sectors. And these are the sectors that will attract incentives from government through GAIPA. Uh, when it comes to agriculture, there are some areas that we promote, uh, sub-sectors for that matter, including granite processing, uh, production and processing, Casual production and processing, sesame production and processing. And recently we are also promoting investment in sugarcane production and processing. Uh, beef production and processing, dairy, pro uh, dairy production and processing. And we have arable land of up to one, uh, 558,000 hectares. So agriculture being very close to the uh, heart of government, we are promoting uh, uh, the sector and it includes all subsectors of agriculture. Uh, when it comes to rice cultivation, because we have arable land for, uh, uh, for rice cultivation, we are also promoting uh, uh, investment in that uh, sector as well. Uh, uh, not only the production, but the processing of rice. Uh, as the ambassador earlier mentioned, uh, Gambia we depend highly on, on rice, so it is important that uh, if we are producing it in the country, uh, so that at least there be import substitution, is sort of uh, important uh, entirely from outside the country. Uh, when it comes to cereal production and uh, processing, all cereals we are promoting it, uh, as well as uh, vegetable production and, and processing. Um, when it comes to tourism, uh, even though we promote investment in all sectors of tourism, but there are some sectors that are identified as uh, priority areas, and this include four and five star hotels, uh, integrated resort, golf courses, family villas, and golf clubs. Uh, integrated resource in the Gambia, uh, uh, the most competitive destination in West Africa, uh, that is the Gambia. And uh, when it comes to integrated resort, the world's second most price competitive destination for travel and tourism. Uh, land available for investors uh, in four and five star resort uh, development. Uh, so there are areas that have been identified by government to promote tourism and uh, is considered as the TDA, that is the Tourism Development Area. So fisheries also we promote investment in fisheries, uh, all types of fish, uh, 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 fishing in terms of both uh, industrial and artisanal uh, fishing. We promote investment in all those areas. Manufacturing, as I said, all form of manufacturing as long as there is value addition is also being promoted by GAIPA on behalf of government. And trans, uh, river transport is another area uh, that we are also promoting because of the river, because it will reduce uh, cost of transportation, especially from the urban areas to the rural areas. 
Uh, as I earlier mentioned, uh, these priority sectors will uh, attract incentives from government. And uh, these incentives include uh, corporate tax waivers uh, or turnover tax waiver. Uh, you also have import duty waiver entirely. It will be waived for a period of time. Uh, import VAT will also be waived. And uh, also when it comes to the pieces on allowance of up to 50%. Uh, but before you can benefit from these incentives, uh, you have to submit an application to GAIPA. Uh, by submitting an application form, you attach the necessary documentation. And the documentations will include from basic documents like business registration certificate, uh, team certificate, uh, evidence of funding, like we want to know how much uh, will be invested in the business in the Gambia. Uh, and that being the case, there is a threshold for foreign investment, uh, which is 250,000 US dollars, uh, which is equivalent to about 12.5 million dollars. But we also uh, encourage domestic businessmen and women, uh, whereby if they invest, there will be a threshold of 100,000 US dollars, uh, which is about uh, 5 million dollars. So uh, with that capital in place, and the necessary documentations, you can attract all these incentives uh, from, from, from GAIFA on behalf of government. And the period uh, for the business to enjoy these incentives uh, will range from five to eight years, depending on the location. If the business is located within the Greater Banyul area, meaning Banyul, KMC, and the town of Brikama, uh, the, uh, the duration will be five years. Whereas other parts of the country, like uh, URR, CRR, LRR, uh, NBR, some parts of West Coast region, uh, you can attract uh, business centers for a period of eight years. Because those places are considered as priority areas, because they are uh, in active need of development. Uh, also, there is provision for expansion. Uh, at the end of the five years, uh, if you still want to expand your business by injecting additional capital, and employing more uh, Gambians or employing more people, then you can apply for an extension, which uh, can be granted. Uh, if you satisfy those uh, three years, you can be given another two years. Uh, but there is another incentive that we also uh, provide to businesses, and this includes uh, the uh, export processing zone license. Like if the business or company is interested to go into processing or uh, uh, processing or manufacturing, whereby at least 80% of the finished products will be uh, exported outside of the Gambia, then you can be granted this export processing zone uh, last year. And uh, the duration of this incentive uh, is 10 years. Uh, no matter where the business is located, you can get eight years. And it also includes all these incentives that I earlier mentioned, including corporate tax waiver uh, or turnover uh, tax waiver, uh, import duty on all capital items, uh, import VAT will also be exempted for the business. Uh, we also have another one, which is the uh, domestic investment certificate. Uh, that is for uh, startup businesses, whereby if you are ready to uh, uh, invest 20,000 US dollars uh, in the business, then you can attract incentives from GAIPA, including all the tax, taxes that I, I mentioned they are going to be waived for the business. Uh, Gambia uh, is, is a small country in size, uh, maybe by population, because the population of the country is uh, 2.4 million uh, people. Uh, but if you look at the location, it's very strategic. Uh, Gambia is considered to be a hub, and uh, we have access to uh, the ECOWAS market. And the population of ECOWAS, or the ECOWAS countries, is about 350 million people. So that being the population where Gambia is also part of, uh, it means the business can have access to that population as, as a market. Uh, also, when it comes to uh, the entire continent of Africa, uh, especially when it comes to the African Union a Continental Free Trade Agreement, with Gambia is a party, you will have access to about one million people. And also we have uh, other international markets like EU, uh, because Gambia is very close to Europe, uh, just about six, uh, six hours flight. Uh, USA uh, and also OIC, uh, uh, Gambia is a member of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. So this, these are markets where you can also add, uh, access uh, to uh, the Gambia. 
when it, when it comes to guarantee for uh, investors and investment, which is always very important for any business person, especially a foreigner, they always want to make sure that their investments will be guaranteed. Uh, so that being the case, there is uh, protection against expropriation. Uh, when it comes to independent valuation, your business can be uh, evaluated, evaluated by any uh, private uh, firm and it will still be accepted by Kaiba. Uh, when it comes to ownership of land, you can have a full ownership of land. Uh, as long as you apply and go through the necessary process, you can acquire land in the country. Uh, there is no interference when it comes to business operation. And in addition, Kaipa is also mandated to monitor uh, and uh, provide the necessary aftercare services to businesses in the country. So by just accessing the incentives from uh, Kaipa, uh, that is not the end of the story, but we will continue to have a, a, a very good working relationship uh, by visiting your business on a regular basis. Uh, because when it comes to attracting these incentives, the government has established a committee. And this committee uh, will look at the application and make a recommendation to the Honorable Minister of Trade, uh, uh, Industry, uh, Regional Integration and Employment. So by uh, the provisions of the GAIPA Act, is the Minister of Trade who actually grants this investment certificate. But before granting the certificate, you always rely on the recommendation that will come from the committee that's been instituted by, uh, by government. So uh, when it comes to protection, as I mentioned, uh, there is protection uh, uh, of uh, investment and investors in the country. Uh, and also when it comes to uh, guarantees, uh, Gambia is a member of the multilateral investment guarantee agency uh, called MIGA. We are also a member of the International Center for the Settlement of uh, Investment Disputes. And also we have uh, various uh, bilateral and international uh, treaties. Uh, we are also, uh, because of the constitution of the, GAM, uh, the, constitution of the country, uh, investments are also protected and guaranteed. Okay, before I end my uh, presentation, uh, there is a slide where there are some locations uh, across the country because every investor will be interested to have access to land. Whether you want to have that land for production, uh, for instance, if it is rice cultivation or agricultural activity, or maybe you need that property just to have your headquarters, but you want to have access to land promotion agency, uh, but we can also sub list to investors so that uh, it will be uh, list to them for a period of time uh, where they can also invest in, in, in the country. So uh, without further ado, uh, this is what I have for you. And uh, thank you so much for your kind address. Senior Manager, Investment, Promotion and Facilitation, Gaipa. Um, to be conscious of time, we will go straight to the next presentation, which will be done by the Chairman of the Kanu State Chamber of Commerce. Can you please do us the honors? Ministers present here, permanent secretaries uh, present here, uh, members of the executive council present here, chairman of elders, members of business community. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Good evening. Alhamdulillah, I'm very glad uh, to stand here uh, with a lot of. Uh, business community and our area here. Uh, I just uh, invited uh, just few days ago to come and meet our business community here. Uh, because of the importance of this, I live a lot of things in Nigeria, especially we have a trade mission between Chad government and Chamber of Commerce. 100 participants are coming to export their products and exhibitions. We have uh, almost 200, over 200 exhibitors within Nigeria. We started from 19th to 5th March. But because of this important uh, gathering and uh, uh, mission, I'm here in Gambia. And I'm very glad, even from the reception we received from the airport, we know that real, real there is a lot of uh, 
participation and uh, there is a lot of uh, cooperation between the Gambia and Nigeria. Despite uh, I'm from the Chamber of Commerce, I want to introduce our overview of Kano Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture. The Kano Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture was established 100 years ago, precisely in 1922. It's currently making plans to celebrate the centenary this year. It is among the pioneers members of Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture. The Chamber organizes annual trade fairs, facilitates research and provides consultancy services on marketing, commodities, products, distributors, import and exports. Similarly, the Chamber embarks on foreign trade mission to create business awareness and promote economic ties between the members of the foreign investors. Members of the Chamber of Commerce drive from macro, small and medium enterprises, trade union women and youth association, farmers union and other members of the organized private sector in Kano State and Nigeria as a whole. Some of the major objectives of the Chamber are to promote the development of commerce, industry, mines and agriculture in Kano State promote, protect the interest of its members to organize private sectors and general public, to facilitate the establishment of the annual beneficial economic and relationship with local and foreign businessmen, to influence favorable government policies on enable environment for growth of commerce, industry, mines and agriculture provide common platform for all legal business and serve as a forum for members to exchange ideas in the area of trade promotion, to provide statistical information in relation to trade, commerce, shipping, manufacturing and all business activities towards informing business plan and decision. It organized seminars, workshops, training, and conference on topical economic issues of the national and international influence, importance. Kano State is blessed with so many products that may be in interest to the Gambia and the Gambian business community. Those include, but not limited, rice, seasoned seeds, beans, hibiscus, flowers, maize, millet, guinea, corn, bambarai nuts, granite, etc. The list of endless is there, therefore not out of place for business community in Gambia to collaborate within Kano Chamber and areas of common business interest for the mutual benefit of both. Now, what I will advise to our African countries, because of this COVID, I can say is to our advantage, because we have to start training between ourselves, instead of train with foreigners. Like now, Chad, they come to my office, they need to know how we can collaborate with them. I invite them to Nigeria. Hundreds of participants are here now in Kano. And uh, this is what I want from Gambian business community. Let's organize something. Let's go with your business community. Let's showcase their items there so that we can collaborate. Instead of going to foreign, foreign countries, we have to establish this between African countries. This is very important to our African countries. It's most now because of the economy of the, of the world. Now it's changing. It's coming down. 
So we have to help ourselves, we Africans. It's very, very important. So we have to start thinking. Like now, Chad government with Chamber of Commerce are, coll are collabor collaborating. Then we don't know how millions of dollars transaction will do with them. So they have already started now. Because of this uh, uh, invitation by my Emir, I leave all, all of them there, and the, even the, the, the ambassadors, they are very annoyed with me. But I told them I cannot do it. If my Emir invites me, I have to leave everything. I have to come with him so that we establish another business trip with the Gambian government and the Chamber of Commerce for the, and the community of the Gambia. So I think uh, this is very important. We have to put it in mind. And I'm very happy the time I'm in here in Gambia. I'm, I hear about rice. They are, you, are, you are talking of rice. You are interested in rice. Like me now, I have a factory, processing factory. I have 300 tons. And inshallah, in the few months, I will, I will produce 600 tons. The, 600 tons of rice. So I think uh, we have to do something uh, with our business that they uh, are interested in the rice. So I'm very glad that I'm here and even my business are interested in here. I'm very happy. And any other business, we have a lot, we have cattle up there and I will give it to you people and I think we have to sit down and see a trip that the Chadian government uh, did something that with Gambia, Gambia government. So I think it's very important. So we have to put it in mind. Thank you very much. Um, Chamber of Commerce, thank you for outlining some of the opportunities. Do you forgot something here? Yeah, my colleague wants to say a few things again. Okay. Yeah. Did, uh, my colleague from Nigeria. Nigeria. Okay. Nigeria. Okay. Nigeria. Okay. Nigeria. Okay. Nigeria. Okay. Nigeria. Marshall. All right. Um, Elijah Umar Marshall wants to um, do a short statement. I hope I pronounced it right. Yeah, you're right. Hosbi Lai Mnechanara Ji, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Royal Highness, the Emir of Kano, Honorable His Excellency, the Ambassador of Nigeria to the Gambia. Honorable Ministers present, I hereby stand on the existing protocol. Uh, we are so happy to be received by the business community in the Gambia, and I uh, would like to assure you that uh, we are here to represent our members in Kano who are interested to establish a big business and mutual relationship with the good people of the Gambia. Uh, as we can see, Kano is one of the most popular states in Nigeria with over 20 million people. And uh, there are no other investors that are invested across West, across West Africa, across Africa than Kano indigents. Kano indigents stand between one to three among the wealthiest Nigerians and one to ten. We have two Kano indigents in the whole of Africa. And the Kano indigents also invested over $16 billion in the largest and the biggest single trench refinery in the whole world. We are glad that this is a new frontier for us and new opportunity for us. We have listened attentively to the presentation by the Kaiba and uh, see the incentives which will share. we are going to share it together with our members back in Nigeria. Uh, secondly, when it comes to rise, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you the like business community, like my predecessor has said, we are the largest importance of rice in the world but as it is now we are the biggest producers of rice in africa so these are the policies that has favored our farmers it has favored our industrialists it has favored a lot of business opportunity 
the showcase of the opportunities that are so abundant in the Gambia, we have seen that and we are ready to invest into that. We are wish to thank you for the warm reception. You come to the Gambia. Every month you come to the Gambia. That's what we have prayed. Aoud Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Sallam Allahu Alaihi Wasallam. Honorable Ministers here present. Nigerian. High Commissioner, permanent secretaries here present, CEO Gambian Import and Export Promotion Agency, Chief Executive Officers of various corporations, the Chairman and members of the National Council of Elders, the Gambia. Other distinguished personalities here present, the time will not allow me to call them one after the other, but giving them the assurance of my high respect, one of them. Members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is with great delight that we are here today in the midst of our brothers and sisters, particularly within such a robust gathering of active participants who play a major role in shaping and contributing positively in our respective economies. I feel obliged appreciate the warm welcome and reception I, I and members of my entourage received yesterday from the Gambian government, the National Council of Elders and other well-wishers. This made us feel quite at home. When the idea of this visit was initiated by the respected Gambian National Council of Elders, it was intended to be more or less an invitation to strengthen our cultural links and affinity. However, good reasoning prevailed and the idea of making economic gains out of the visit was most welcome. The response of our Colonel Chamber of Commerce was prompt and without any iota of hesitation. This goes to show how willing and ready our business community is to establish a strong business relationship with their counterparts from Gambia. I wish to thank the Gambian authorities and all those who worked tirelessly, including our indefatigable High Commissioner, Ambassador Muhammadu Man, for their foresight and support for this meeting. The present challenges we are all confront as developing nations makes it compelling for us to start looking inwards, inwards on how to strengthen our economic and commercial relationship as a panacea to our development, developmental challenges. Luckily, we have a well-established diplomatic framework which we could build upon to further our commercial relations. This is my vision. We have to do all what it takes to develop South-South cooperation, particularly within our South region. The various protocols within the ECOWAS give us a common platform which we could use to our common good. 
I therefore urge you all look over the horizon and explore all the areas of comparative advantage to create a mutually beneficial relationship that could boost our respective economies, thereby creating opportunities that could bring about sustained economic growth to our two nations, and of course for the overall benefit of our people. I need to mention that in my entry, I have three renowned industrialists who are key players in the economy of Kano. They are Al-Haji Al-Hatu Abu Bakr, owner of al Hamsad, who has one of the biggest rice mills in Nigeria, with over 400 employees and a monthly turnover of more than $2.2 million. Al-Haji Munzani Zakari, who is also into trading, manufacturing, is owner of Mazav Nigeria Limited. He has 180 permanent employees and over 500 other casual workers with a monthly turnover of five million US dollars. I have Al-Haji Umar Sani Marshall, owner of Marshall Biscuits, Marshall Hotel Apartments, Marshall College. He's into manufacturing of biscuits, pop snacks, macaroni, hotel, college, and real estate with over 600 employees and a turnover of 2 million US dollars monthly. I'm sure if not for the short notice given to them, many of the members of the chamber will have joined us on this trip. Finally, I wish to urge you all to remain resolute and to work with an open mind to establish an enviable business relationship. It's often believed that the fastest way to create an enduring relationship is through commerce. We should therefore work together to crystallize this. I also wish to assure our Gambian brothers and sisters that we have brought to you to your doorsteps opportunities and possibilities waiting to be tapped and harnessed and we are ready to take same from you. I pray to Allah to make this visit and the outcome of this interaction the beginning of a new era in our bilateral relations, and in particular between the Kano business community and their Gambian counterparts. I will give you the assurance of my throne, which I happen to be the 15th Emir of Kano, which has over 30 million population and been permanent, inshallah, till when God wills, I leave. So I'm giving you that assurance of my support and cooperation. And I pray Allah will help us to succeed as brothers and sisters. Inshallah. Thank you very much and God bless. Well noted, well noted. Your Royal Highness.